Hi, this is Scott Brown with a P10 Tool Review introducing the Texa Axoni Nemo Plus with Multi-Hub. Now I've been working with this tool for some time now and I have a number of cool things to share. Now Texa may be new to the US market, but they are no strangers to other regions of the world. Texas heritage dates back to the early 90s and by the 2000s, their diagnostic equipment and services span across multiple transportation segments, including passenger cars and light trucks, to heavy duty, off-highway, motorcycles, and marine. They're also partnered with many OEM vehicle manufacturers by providing them with both diagnostic tooling and support. The Nemo Plus tablet and VCI supporting cables are provided in a ruggedized storage case with laser cut foam. So let's check this thing out. And you can see we've got laser cut foam, storage for all the special cabling. The VCI fits nicely in this box here. And then up here in the top, this is where our tablet, our ruggedized tablet resides. Now to the tablet here, this thing is a beast and built for rugged environments. The heftiness of this tablet includes all of this, 13 inch Gorilla Glass, magnesium internal casing, 512 gigabyte SSD, 16 gigabytes of RAM, dual band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now onto this multi-hub interface, this thing is pretty awesome. In addition to its ability to support multiple protocols, and the interfaces, the backlit display here increases the technician's situational awareness through 40 operational messages and statuses. And what I really love about this is that when you plug it into the vehicle, it's gonna give you battery voltage, it's gonna give you the minimum and maximum values. Now, whenever you're doing a diagnostic, sometimes you can run a, quite a while and you don't wanna risk having the battery to, to drop down too far. And as mentioned earlier, this is a the, the diagnostic interface here, vehicle interface, communicates a ton of information to the technician. And one of the things I really like here is we've got battery voltage shown, live voltage, the min and the max. So normally what I'd like to do before I begin any diagnostics is go ahead and just crank this vehicle up. And you can see here our minimum voltage is 11.4 and we've got charging voltage. So right away I know the vehicle's charging, that battery is pretty strong. So if I've got a short diagnostic session with the key on engine off, I don't really need to worry too much about an auxiliary power supply. But it is always, uh, you know, in front, front insight so that we can, you know, make a determination. Also, this thing is super heavy duty as well. It's got these uh, ports down in the bottom here. And they are, they are sealed up big time. So you've got RJ45, uh, Ethernet for DOIP, you've got a USB, another USB, and then you've got a power supply there as well. And then there is also a four millimeter uh, banana jack style plug uh, there. All right, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and we'll just lay this up on the dash and you can see it's got a nice tether so you can hang it under the hood or hang it somewhere where it's secure and out of the way. All right, so now let's go ahead and explore the IDC5. This is their fifth generation of diagnostic software. So we'll make a connection into the vehicle and we're gonna do diagnosis, okay? And then we're gonna pick the category. So we are passenger cars. And here, Texas has done a fine job with the ScanVin 2.0 and the TGS3 system, making it easy to use. Uh, so it's, it's telling us what to do. It's giving us nice guided instructions. So we're going to hit OK. It's going to go out and, and look for this VIN number and then help us identify the vehicle. Now this is a uh, 2014 Jetta here. Uh, it's asking us to verify a couple of things here. So uh, two different vehicle choices. It's got an AJ Sport Wagon, uh, which it's not that. Uh, it's the second one here, so we'll click OK. And here's our, here's our main screen, okay? So we've got some actions we can take on the vehicle. We can do a global system scan, which is where I'm gonna start. 
And then there's another really cool feature here called mileage and VIN check. Uh, very powerful feature, we'll go into that in a minute. Now, but from this screen, you can actually scroll down here and you can go right into whichever module. So if you're kind of in expert mode and you want to jump right in and go into a particular system, you can do that, okay? But for this, uh, this video, we'll go ahead and just hit the TGS 3S, okay? And so this is the scan. You saw that it gave us a screen there on the diagnostic connector location. Um, and then, of course, I've, I've already uh, connected this once to this car. So I'm going, it, it gives us a warning. It says, hey, there's a scan that's already been performed and here are the details. We, we identified 12 units responding, seven did not have errors. We had five with errors. And then there were 20 control units that did not respond. So those are potential control units that may or may not exist on the vehicle. So I'm gonna select the second option here, carry out a complete vehicle scan so I can walk you through what this thing does. And it's pretty awesome. So it's initializing and communicating with our, um, with our device and getting ready to do the full scan. All right, here's our results. We've got our quick scan results here and we've got a list of uh, warning indicators. So we've got warnings and you see this is flashing down here. It's telling us that these modules have DTCs in them. The green are, they communicated fine and there were no faults. And then the red uh, would be modules that it cannot uh, talk to. So they may, may be non-existent modules or what have you. So um, you can look at the quick scan and then over here on the DT DTC detected tab, you can then get a full report. You've got a P1945 control unit one, radiator fan control short circuit, uh, P1950 coolant fan jammed or locked fault. Um, we've got uh, Switch over board here on the BCM. We've got a sunroof issue. Yeah, this one definitely has a sunroof. We had to disable it. And this is one of our loaner vehicles. Um, we've got an instrumentation or, or what have you. So it's, there's a lot of really, really interesting things here. So at this point, we can hit save, okay? And we, we save the record. And then I'm gonna hit the print icon here. And this is what we really like to do. I like to track everything that we're doing so here we can enter the, the license plate. I'm going to skip that part. I'm going to enter the mileage here, 101.533. Okay, I'm going to check that. Okay. And then it says operation has been carried out successfully. And then it says open the generated files folder. So I can check that off and I'm going to click. It's going to open the web browser. It's going to show me the PDF. Okay, so I'm going to double click on this PDF and we'll open it up. And here's, here's our full report. So right now we can take that PDF, we can either email it. What we do, we just load up our, uh, my shop management system right there. I can just load up another tab. I can put that file right in it. But what's really cool here is that this PDF can be appended to. So what I, and you'll see what I'm talking about here. So I'm gonna click back on our icon there. Um, and when we go in to run a, another test, and produce a report, it'll append it to that other uh, PDF, which is really awesome. Uh, a couple other really cool things here is that we have this gauges panel here. Okay, if we click on that, one, we're gonna see the full network on the vehicle, okay? And we've got icons here describing what each module is. We've got CAN high, or high speed CAN, and we've got K line. You can see which modules are communicating, which ones have uh, faults in them. So if we click there, I can click right on that, and then uh, we've got quick description on, uh, on what's going on there, okay? Now, if we come back here, I wanted to go into, we can double click, and it takes us right into that module, okay? We'll confirm. It tells us to turn the key on. We're gonna confirm. No fault codes. Um, we can go to parameters, we can start looking at data. So there's our live data stream that's coming in. We can double click and it turns it into a graph, which is uh, very helpful, okay? 
It's going to show us a bunch of statuses here. There's 66 statuses, and it's updating them. It's all very useful information. We've got the ECU information. So we've got the ECU code, unit, the coding, software version, VIN number, engine coding. You've got activation, so you can do activations, you can do error clearing. And then we've got settings here for ECU coding, uh, GRA activation, deactivation, self-adaptive uh, resetting, throttle position uh, self-adapts, okay? So we're, we're gonna close that module. I'm gonna exit. I'm gonna show you something that's really slick. And we're gonna go into the transmission module, okay? So it's logging into the module. We'll confirm, and we're gonna pull up our data screen here. The normal screen it lands on is the fault code page. We're gonna click on parameters. And then on the parameters, you'll notice that this gauge package button is active. And that's gonna pull up Texas unique uh, information panel. It gives you a lot of contextual data right, right in line. So here we can see our accelerator pedal. Open up the throttle, you can see our RPM is increasing. Transmission fluid temperature, very useful, especially if you're checking transmission fluid levels. Uh, gearbox input speed, transmission output speed, um, running resistance, transmission fluid, torque limitation, the shift selector, so we're in park, now we're in reverse, now we're in neutral, now we're in drive, now we're in uh, S mode, okay? And then we can go up here and we're gonna go over to manual manual mode and you see the tiptronic button uh, selector level so if i'm going to go down we're showing 1000 here and now we're showing 1100 and then i'm going to go to upshift now we're showing 11,000 here so those are the those are our bit uh, bit group there so very useful information <clears throat> so we're back here at our main screen and over here on our left here we've got wiring diagrams so Right now on this vehicle, we have the ABS that's available. Select that and then here we go. We've got their own built-in wiring diagrams and these are, these are pretty nice units. You can click on a device, it tells you what the unit is. So, you know, if you're working on a lot of German cars, you'll notice that a lot of times they're, they've got little short names for them, but it's hard to remember what they are. So if you mouse on or you click on that, gives you I-36 uh, is a traction control switch um, and it's where its location is, okay? So we're gonna exit out of that. And the thing that I've, I saw that was pretty valuable here is that uh, we've also got data sheets here on various systems. So if, if we wanna learn a little bit more about what a particular system is and how it works, uh, so we'll just go into the air conditioning and AC system check. So right here, they've got a document on how to conduct a proper air conditioning system check. And it's all right there at the, at the technician's fingertips. Very, very cool, okay? All right, so let's go back to the self-diagnosis. We've got this item here called mileage and VIN check, okay? And where this comes in handy is, say that you're inspecting a vehicle for the first time and you suspect that maybe this vehicle's been, been around the block several times and maybe people have been putting in different parts and stuff from the vehicle, you can run this operation uh, and it will check all the modules that have the VIN number and have the mileage and it will give you a nice report. Now that is, is pretty useful because if you've got different mix and match of modules, you know, now you understand how things can be complicated. So we're gonna run this VIN and mileage check we're gonna go next. And this is also really good for pre-purchase inspection for customers uh, because you know you never know where this what what's been going on with a vehicle. Um, you know, whether it's got modules from different vehicles uh, or what. And that may be leading to you know other anomalies that are happening with the car. So we're gonna let this run, boot up, and produce this report. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how this will append to the original PDF that we ran initially, which I think is pretty valuable. So you don't have to have two different PDF files to attach to your invoice. 
And like I said earlier, this thing is really robust. And while that's scanning, let's just review a couple more things here. We've got uh, USB ports. There's four of them up here on the top. You've got a power adapter at the bottom there, power uh, button here at the top. So here's our report, okay? It says a mobilizer odometer is not available there, but there's the VIN. There's our, uh, the Motronic controller. It's got the VIN, no mileage. And then the instrument cluster, of course, has the mileage and the VIN. All the VINs match, so that's good. So I'm gonna hit print, all right? And then we'll open up that, gen that files folder again, click, and now, we're gonna go ahead and double click and open that guy up, okay? So I'll zoom out a little bit. So this is our original full-on scan, the TG, TGS3S, okay? And then we scroll down, and now here's the mileage and VIN check that's been appended to that, that PDF, which is really cool, right? very, very powerful. All right, so let's go back to our our system will go ahead and back out of this operation. Confirm exit. We'll go back and back here up on this main self-diagnosis page. We've got the vehicle maintenance. So you want to run quick service on things. So there's a quick service item. There's your service reset. Um, battery starting and charging. New battery adaptation. You go right in here and, and you change out the battery. You can go ahead and register the battery there. Uh, your brakes, you've got your brake bleed sequence. Uh, operation that you can call up as well. Uh, very, very helpful uh, contextual uh, data there. Uh, in a separate video, we're going to cover more in depth on the diagnostics, and we're going to talk also about the motor technical data that comes as part of your package, your diagnostic package. Uh, so um, we'll go into that and show you how that can work because now the technician doesn't have to really go anywhere. He can work. He or she can work from right, right behind the seat here, right at the vehicle, uh, within the tablet, the, the whole, the whole way. And as you can see here, I've only have the car stuff set up, but you can add truck, off highway, bike, and marine to your subscription, and be able to service all of those vehicles. Pretty powerful. And then down here, you've got your regular um, functions for managing the tool. So you want to run updates regularly to make sure that you're running the latest uh, operations and, uh, and so on. And in case I didn't mention this before, the tablet is Windows-based, which is what you usually find in commercial and professional environments, where security is a priority. And on top of that, Texas Tech Support Team is ready to assist where they can provide remote assistance into the tool. For more information, please visit the Texa website at texausa.com. And this is just the beginning. And in subsequent videos, we'll take a deeper dive into some of the capabilities that Texa is bringing into the marketplace. And I hope you found this video helpful and informative. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And thanks for watching.